Mr. Manon in here, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a Jet Puff marshmallow crossbow for Jet Puff marshmallows. In the video description, you will find a link to a PDF for the plans. If you're in my class, we've got the orange templates you can follow. Please be safe building this, and be safe when you're done. Thanks for watching. Okay, I'm using various species of hardwoods, uh, cedar, walnut, and soft maple. All the wood is three quarters of an inch thick, and I have a small piece of half an inch dowel. You're only gonna need about four inches. Got your plans here, your patterns, your templates, whichever you're using. All right, time to get started by tracing out the parts. So I've got my stock, my bow that notches in here. This is kind of like a cross lap joint. And then I've got my trigger, which is gonna go somewhere right here. All right, but before I put this together, there's some things I wanna do. I want to go ahead and I'm going to go to the belt sander, sand the edges, and then I'm going to go to the router and soften the edges everywhere, especially where I hold it on the trigger. And then I have a few more parts to cut out. There's a part that's going to go right here, and that's for the trigger to pivot on. There's a dowel that goes up here that pushes up and down. So actually the next thing I'm going to do is mark that and drill that hole out. All right, this is the point at which I'm going to drill the half inch hole. And what's really important here is that these lines on the side here are perfectly square with the clamp that I'm drilling in. Now the hole's drilled out um, and this slides, but not good enough. So what I'm gonna do is take some sandpaper and just sand this down might take a little while until this slides super easy in that hole. I'm going to go ahead and take this stuff to the belt sander and the router. At the router table, I've got a quarter inch round over bit in. And I've got my crossbow kind of put together because I want to mark a couple places where I don't want a radius. And it's going to be this section right here where this joint is. I know. I do not want to router this top edge where the marshmallow is going to slide. I also don't want a router where this gets glued on, so I'm gonna come back a ways here. All right, that's where I'm gonna start the router. Go all the way through and stop there. I start assembling this. I want to go ahead and spend some time sanding it while there's still individual parts. Next thing I'm going to do is join the stock to the uh, the bow part, and I'm going to do two countersink holes with bung holes right here. 
So I decided just to go with one right down the middle. Next thing I need to make are two of these, one that goes on each side that's going to support the trigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one out of a piece of soft maple here and then I'm going to go to the bandsaw and resaw it into two pieces. So once again the process is mark it, drill it, cut out the outside and then resaw the, um, the piece into two. Now the thing is it's pretty short. It could be dangerous on the bandsaw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it longer so I have something to hold on to while I resaw it. Alright, so what I have are these little axle pegs that we use for toy cars. I cut them a little bit shorter but what I'm gonna do is assemble this trigger mechanism first. And then one peg on that side, that gets glued in there. All right, now I'm gonna assemble this to the, uh, the crossbow. All right, what I got here is a 18 gauge nail gun with short nails. I've got my marks where my little bracket goes. So that goes right there, flush on the top with my marks. And I'm just gonna put a couple nails in there. Flip it over, make sure those are lined up. All right, so with the, the trigger fully depressed, you wanna mark an angle right here that's about, ooh, I'd say about a half inch above this point and angled back that way. All right, so with that cut, this goes all the way down, and that is your trigger mechanism. Next thing we need to work on is the part that holds the marshmallow in place. Okay, so I'm gonna make this out of a single piece of walnut. Just make sure that for this part right here, the grain is going that direction. Not like this, but like this. That looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on. It's been about 10 minutes, and this is starting to set up. So now I can really fine tune it and get exactly where I want it, and I'm not gonna use clamps. I'm just gonna let it dry like it is. All right, so the next thing I need to do is put a track on the top for the marshmallow to slide in. Now, this eighth inch piece of soft maple, half inch wide, needs to go, needs to overlap this. So I could notch this out or I could trim this off and I'm gonna trim that off right there. So now I'm going to make these notch over the bow part, so I'm just using it to mark it, and then I'm going to go to the bandsaw and cut this out. Something like that. Now that this fits in here like this, I'm going to go ahead and go to the top and curve it just to give it a sense of style. Alright, so what I was talking about was curving the top here. Right, and you can see how it's gonna create a track, especially when I get the other one on, that the marshmallow will slide in as it launches out. Mm -hmm. 
so there's a modification I'm going to make today, and this is the firing pin, this trigger mechanism. It works great, but this comes out. So what I'm gonna do is extend it and pass it through the trigger so that it pivots in here as well. Now this is something I would have liked to have done before I assemble this, but it is a modification. And what I'm gonna do is drill about three or four holes along this line to create an opening. on to sanding but before that I briefly want to mention the problem solving process that's exactly what happened here with the trigger uh, it was working but I saw something that could be better so I modified it all right you have to embrace that in woodworking sanded, finished, we need to attach the surgical tubing that's going to act as the, uh, the string on the bow. What we have is some stainless steel wire. This is uh, 0 .07. Uh, basically, coat hanger would work as well. Uh, same twine, just small nylon rope. And this is 3 8 surgical tubing. First thing I'm going to do is cut the surgical tubing to 10 inches. Now I'm going to cut two pieces of the wire at 3 inches. I'm going to cut a piece of same twine about 20 inches long. Alright, with the 3 inch metal, you need a pair of pliers and you're going to go right to the end and you're going to bend it over on itself. Something like that. Then you're going to take your pliers, go up to the part that was bended over, and bend a 90 degree angle. Something like that. And then you're going to go about, leave about one inch here, and bend it again. Not quite all the way to 90 though. Something like that. Next, you're gonna take the folded over end and put it in the surgical tubing. Now we need to secure these with the same twine. Right, in the vise, we're going to tie a series of hitches. I'm gonna make that first one really tight. Use your pliers to pull on one end. And then we're simply gonna do a knot on top of a knot tucking through this tail. And what this is doing is pinching that surgical tubing on the other side of that barb that we folded over. So I did about four of those, pull them really tight. Now I'm gonna cut them about a quarter inch from the end then take a lighter and melt those down. This is gonna keep the knot from coming undone. That should work. Now to the other side. So you're gonna take your end and see how this isn't quite a 90 degree. It allows us to slide it through the hole then we're going to take our pliers and pinch that down to a 90. Okay, with the, the wire folded over, 
You want to do a couple test pulls, right? Make sure that those are going to stay in there. And then you'll see this tubing comes back and locks in and that V cut out. You pull the trigger. Time to put a marshmallow in there. Woodworkers, uh, remember the intended use of this crossbow is for jet puff marshmallows. And I found they work better if you put a little flour in the bag so they don't stick to the crossbow. And just be safe. That's all I ask. Thanks for watching. So subscribe, shoot here. For more videos, shoot here.